just going to go along and uh, you want to hit present for me. You're just going to shoot the yeah. Is that turned on? It is turned on. Yeah. We're rolling. So we're five minutes away from here. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And so you probably turn it off. Yeah. You want to do a test? Testing, testing, testing. So I probably feel a little bit, a little bit closer. Hello? Yeah, mine works. Is that, that's amplified, yeah. We're good. Yeah. You project. I think once you get uh, voices down, we'll look. Okay. It's all you. We got a few minutes. Yeah. Are you the? Are you? I'm gonna, introducing. I'm oh, in. good. I was wondering whether somebody's gonna, or they just had it sort of do yeah. a song Hello, and dance. Oh, yeah. 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 Song and dance. Cool. I guess someone posted on the page. They got this incubator with chicks hatching, and now and now I'm sitting here trying to watch it. Oh, what kind of chicks? Not like the uh, eagles. What was that? No, I think they're just that chickens. Was in Washington D.C. Oh, did no. they do it? Uh, there was some last week in the news about some eagles that were that hatched someplace. Huh? Maybe it's New York City. I can't remember. Anyhow, well, look at that. It kept it in the corner there, so I can still watch it. That's cool. Oh, there you go.
Did you get your stick? Yeah, I got my stick. Go ahead. Um, do you have your phone with your notes? So you don't get lost or read your little notes or on your iPad or something? Oh. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name's John. I am here to introduce these two fine gentlemen. Um, we've got Sean, we've got Dan. These guys are both from Carroll College. Who you, well, I guess you met Dan. This, Sean is the, uh, what is he, the, the, the third wheel of Ryan is this? The third wheel. There the, you go. The best wheel yeah, in the car. Yeah, the best wheel, that's right. The most reliable wheel. Sean <laughs> is a, he's a former student, right? Now you are, are a full-time right. employee. Right, yep. yep. Yeah? So, uh, and then we have Dan here. He, Dan has a background in political science and web development. And Dan somehow got caught in the ABIT world and hasn't looked back since. Uh, he's an avid learner and user of new technology and education. Along with being Extron AV certified, he currently teaches teachers at Carroll College how to use technology for learning in both K-12 and higher ed. Being able to design classrooms with both ABIT background and 20 years of teaching experience gives Dan a unique perspective and design on practicality. Uh, and I can also say from, from personal experience, these guys on a really hot day, humid day, they love a strawberry daiquiri. Just to <laughs> <laughs> sit down and play some putt-butt golf. <laughs> it's cool. a strawberry daiquiri. So let's have a nice round of applause for Sean and Dan. All right. Thank you. Cool. Well, thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Um, we kind of... Uh, at Carroll, we're doing like engaged learning, so we try to make this um, interactive. So we're going to do a couple things with you to make this interactive. Um, so we're talking about higher ed and is it possible? And the big question for us to you um, would be what do you think about this first off? So what I want you to do is grab a browser. Um, it could be on your phone, it could be on your iPad, it could be on your laptop. It doesn't matter what device you have. And I want you to go to um, www.kahoot.it or Kahoot it. If you just type in Kahoot.it, it will take you to where you need to go. Um, go over one. I know, I was going to say, if you're going to the right place, it should look like this when you get there. So, should look like that. And you're waiting for a game pin from us. Um, and so, just hit launch. Um, we'll give you that game pin here in just one second. So the game pin you want to put it in is 298386. <laughs> We've got great music going on. 298386. Uh, and then just type in a, a name. Okay, like... Fro-J-Lo. Fro-J-Lo. <laughs> Fro um, so we'll get everybody on board here. Cheesehead. I like that. Darth Crumbins. That's crumb. Mobile Bronco. Darth Crumbins. So we got 11? Any more? Anyway, we should pick up a few here. Not see the name. All right. 15. 15. Are we good? We'll keep that number up if you still want to join us um, in just a bit. And this isn't going to work for that. So you have to answer. Right. So what you'll see is you'll see a question pop up, and um, after the question is up there for a few seconds, it'll then give you four multiple choice options. You'll, on your display, you'll only have four little colored boxes um, that you'll be able to choose from, but they coordinate with one of the options. So just so you know what you're about to see. All right, we ready? Got to match the box. All right, here we go. So there's only four questions here. We're going to ask you: um, Does your school have a mobile initiative on campus? And I just need you to answer yes or no. Just I'm sorry. Just get some two options. Red. Okay. Cool. Wow. Almost so six that. people here do. Nice. Cool. All right. Let's go to the next one real quick. Are you considering or have you been asked to consider moving to a mobile program? And the answer is 
So four people with milk. So kind of all milk, over the milk. Kind of a good spread okay, there. Okay, cool. All right. Do this a little quick here. How many devices does an average? Okay, this is a misleading question here. So, and that the, the four should be four plus. <laughs> Anything that's connected to the internet, I would yeah. say. <laughs> Smartphone, tablet, laptop. I guess yeah. yeah. Streaming TV would count. Xbox. Yeah. All right. And it looks like. <laughs> wow. Pretty much more Lots. than one. Okay. So. Cool. All right. Last question. Faculty. Okay, now we're, um, let's see, we've got 16, perfect. <laughs> Just on the low end. Wow, yeah. okay. Nobody's over 50%. Nobody's over 50%. Yeah, so. Half room, though. somewhere about 40 to 50. Wow, that's right. pretty good. Okay, cool. Just something to keep in mind as we really move forward. Um, so that's that. All right, back to what we're doing here. Oops. Oh. So, a little history um, kind of about, about how this all came to pass. About 18 months ago, our unbeknownst to the IT department at our school. Our president and a bunch of vice presidents got invited um, to go somewhere. They actually got invited to go down to Cupertino. Um, went down there, had a big presentation by Apple, had some other universities come in and say, hey, we're doing this cool thing. And so the president and the both vice presidents come back to campus. They come to a meeting with us and they say, guess what? We're going to do an iPad initiative of Car at Carroll College. That's what we want to do. Um, which is kind of a weird way to, to go about it. I think. <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, so at at that point, and the rationale was is like, and they were our president, and vice president. Some of them are are fairly like in the forties, whatever. So they've got kids and younger age kids, and they came from other places around the nation, and they're like, you know, little Johnny and little Susie. They're all using iPads inside the classroom, and it's an expectation. And when they get to higher education, they either want to have the same or better technology than they're using in the K-12 environment. And so therefore, if Johnny and Susie are using it in their K-12 right now, we need to be there at, at the higher edge level to, to continue that experience, that immersive experience that they're getting in K-12. So that was the whole rationale um, behind as to why we were doing this. And plus, the Kool-Aid, I guess, in Cupertino was really, really good. Um, so those two things um, kind of combined. So then immediately what kind of was, happened was we had to form a committee to look into this and start exploring options. But as you would probably say would, of course, be the result is a few things happened. So if you cue the next slide. Um, so, oh. so what I want you to do is um, um, in your, I just need one person in a table to talk amongst your table is what would you do? So, you, so your president comes back to you and says, this is what we're gonna do. We need to make it happen. So I want you to go to todaysmeet.com um, slash northwestmet um, and then um, talk amongst your table or talk amongst your friends or your next door neighbors and come up with a thing as to just type in a short paragraph about what, what would you do if that was a situation on your campus. Todaysmeet.com slash Northwestmet. So take a couple minutes, grab a friend, come up with a, with a quick little paragraph or something. Do I do anything or with this or just let it go? No, nope, just let it go. Cool. Sorry, I forgot about the slide. Yep. That was going to pop up with the other one. <laughs> you probably need to refresh it at some point, maybe. Oh, okay. Just refresh it now and see if it'll... Oh, we have to join. We have to join. So, oh. so type in your nickname as like, um, yeah, just show. Yeah, okay. Um. Dan's fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's good.
It should just pop up. But nobody's doing it yet. It's after this is the reaction slides. Pardon me? After this is the reaction slides. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can type more than one. Does success look like a timeline? Okay, if you got something, go out and submit a couple or we'll submit one. You just got on the internet? Oh, okay. You can do it on an iPad, yeah, or, or either way. <laughs> the phone table is what gives you okay. away. Okay, you guys are just like my students. All right. <laughs> so I don't get, I don't get we're super. <laughs> Give them an inch, they take a mile. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need some feedback here, up here. Go ahead and submit it if you got something. All right. Content creation, the previous content, the student that's something you can. Ah, nice. Okay. The rest of it is to see what happens. Start with a pilot program. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's the slowest roll. Can I be there? Can I be there when you tell like your president that? that? Whoa! Please. Slow your roll. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, so we can apply it. All right. Is everybody submitted something? Okay. One more? Jim's coming on board? Yeah. Okay. All right. About more people on campus, including IT and faculty. Perfectly. Okay. Nice. Thanks. Okay, so as you can as you can expect from this, um, I lost my pointer. Oh, you snakes! Okay. Yeah, nice, nicely done. Um, so this was our faculty reaction, um, obviously, <laughs> um, <laughs> as to um, what was going on. So yeah, um, faculty, yeah, definitely have strong opinions um, regarding this. Um, in the same line, this was our IT reaction um, to this kind of initiative. Um, and a lot of different reasons for that, and a number of them that, 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 that you stated there as to it going forward. Yeah, I'd say like with our faculty, um, one of the questions they had is like, you know, this is something that feels like it's being forced upon us. You know, something that um, isn't just for a few people, but is for all of our faculty. We're a small college. And so this initiative would affect all of them. And some were already doing a few cool things, mobile um, applications, mobile platforms, but a lot of them weren't. And so to be able to do this meant they had to jump on board and do something that they may not be even ready for. And with IT, um, I work specifically in a support area. A lot of the questions we had were things like, well, we're about to add, what, 1,500 more devices on campus? Actually, more than that if you count all the faculty with them. Um, so can our Wi-Fi handle that? What does it mean for our support center, of course? Do we need to fix all of these? Are we going to buy Apple Care for all of them? Um, and how do we handle all this load? So there was a ton of questions. So all of us were just really scared about this. Yeah, and yeah do you buy minis? Do you buy full size? Do you buy 16 gig? Do you buy 32 gig? Are we going to go to all our contents? Are we going to buy into the whole Apple ecosystem and move everything to that? Are we going to use iBooks for all of our textbooks? There's all these questions that, that, that we were thinking. Um, 
And they were arguing some, sometimes that this is, we're going to buy into one ecosystem, and so it's all going to be the same. So it's actually going to be easier for you guys to support because everyone's going to have the same device. Um, and faculty, we had a couple, but they were like, if you buy everybody iPads, you're just forcing us to use iPads in our classroom. Um, and you know, I, I'm not going to go there, or I'm not there yet, or all kinds of different things um, in reaction to And one that. of the biggest issues we had was, and I don't know about all of you, but some of our classrooms are still designed for 70 pound student who's right handed. You know, we don't have flexible <laughs> spaces, you know. Some of them don't have the best Wi-Fi, they're still hard floors. So even if they had the device, the classroom tools, the, the learning environments weren't set up to use those to the full capacity, the full potential of what they could be. So we had questions all about how our classrooms would be effective for all these devices in teaching. Um, so the next big thing was, okay, fine, you know, if we're going to do this, then, then what's it going to cost? Um, they were giving us an example of Lynn University, a university down in Florida that went ahead and did this, and Lynn was drinking the juice and saying this is amazing, and we found all these great outcomes and things have happened. Um, and so we started thinking, okay, what, if we did this, how much is it going to cost? Because when, you know, the dollars hit the, hit the road. So we looked at some, some things um, and just got some basic rough costs. This is a short expert from a huge Excel spreadsheet that our business department, our financials people did. Um, the end result was um, this bottom line right here, which is $3.1 million over um, a four-year period. Um, just with attrition, and this is, we're a small school, you know, 1,500 students, you know. And then the question was, do you buy them for adjunct professors? Do you buy them for all those? What if you've got high school students that are coming into your college? So you have everybody in the class has one except for the high school students? Do you buy one for them? Or how do you get those people? And then you've got OTAs and you've got um, older people from the community taking courses. Well, do they get left out or how do they get stuff? And what if somebody breaks them and attrition and different things? And so... And then the, well, the other part of the cost then too is not just the iPads, but of course the thing we talked about. So we'd have to hire another network person to support the load on our infrastructure. We'd have to pay for faculty training. We'd have to hire another support person to support this. Um, we'd have to potentially change out some classroom technology. So all the things just to make the iPads work well, which is another package of hundreds of thousands of dollars, not even just the device, but everything else that goes along with that infrastructure wise. So our president's like, well, Lynn University did it, we can do it. And, um, so we started looking at Lynn University. They actually hosted a presidential debate a few years back, um, which gutted their, their network infrastructure. They got like $3 million. So they have a you know, core to core fiber optic structure, 10 gigabits, and they have over 500 access points on their campus, three access points per classroom. I mean, their infrastructure is set up for this because of a presidential debate. Um, we just don't have that. <laughs> and so you're not comparing apples to apples at this point. And we're like, no pun intended, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> so, um, but $3 million was, was, was what really made our, our people stand up and say, wow. And our, our question from an IT standpoint is, what are we about? Are we about learning and te teaching and learning and education, or are we about the technology? And in three, if you buy these things, $3 million, and if something changes down the road, right, we go to different technology. And we know that's not going to happen, right? It's always the same technology all the time. Um, what, what, have we just lost our $3 million investment? Is that just gone? Or do we do something different? Um, so change was definitely happening around us, as we all know, um, and all the time. So this is 18 months ago when, they, when this happened. And in 18 months, a lot has changed since, since then. Um, and our big question was, how do you know that the iPad is the correct device? Now, I'm, I'm an Apple guy. I've been drinking the juice since 1991. Um, but even I was questioning. I'm like, you know, the iPad is a consumable device where you go on there and you play games and you read, you read news. Do you really generate content on your iPad and, and use that in a, in a productive way? And then how are you going to do it? The big question we had, too, was apps versus websites. So are there unique apps on the iPad that make it the unique platform? Or are these apps or websites available on any ecosystem? Can I do the same thing? I just had you guys do Kahoot, and I didn't care what, what, what device you're using. I just said, you just got to have a browser. So does it matter? And can we buy Chromebooks, which are you know, two for one for an iPad? And you get a full keyboard. And I don't have the support issues. <laughs> and, and, and. Um, and then. 
Yeah, one of the biggest things we've been seeing, being in a support area, every semester, you know, we see students come in wanting to connect to the internet or the Xbox doesn't work. They just don't buy the same device, you know, and they already have them. You said in the beginning, you know, most of your students arrive at your campuses with three, four more devices. So that tells us that, well, I mean, how can we control that ahead of time? So they already have a Surface or an Android tablet or an iPad or a Mac or a PC, all of the following, or multiple of each. So they're already there. They already have, they're arriving with this. So what does that mean for us? Yeah. And, you know, they might have got an iPad for graduation. Do I want to give them another iPad when they, when they get to campus? And how do I know if that iPad has all the, the right tools and everything else? So the different, different ecosystems, I think, are kind of going away. The whole thing that we're only going to support one ecosystem and that's going to make it easier for everybody, I think that that's, we've kind of said, you know, that's kind of going away. Um, you just need a browser these days. I, I, don't, I don't really care what, what device you're on, whether you're an Android device or iOS device, different things. So we looked at that. Um, so the big question is, well, what are we doing? <laughs> so, you know, President wanted action. Well, we've got to do something. Um, the faculty were all up in arms saying $3 million, that money could be spent so much better ways. You know, we need raises, we need this, and, you know, and, and, um, and we're not going to be forced into this stuff. Um, so we had to do something. So we came up, we said, okay, things are going to change regardless of what we do. We've we got to get on board. We've got faculty that are on board already that are already using iPads. Some faculty are using Chromebooks. Some faculty are HP Streams. Some faculty are you know, Windows, Mac. It doesn't matter what they're doing. We've got to get on board. We've got to help these faculty. Um, so we came up with some, some initiatives to kind of make this stuff happen. You got anything for here? So we came up with this My Classroom initiative. We said that let's start, well, what many of you guys said, let's, let's go back to this. Let's go back to the foundation. Let's start a camp campaign to see if it's really going to work. Where is it at from the, from the ground up? So we started this program called the My Classroom program. Um, we got some funding early on, and we got 10 faculty as a small cohort to come into this thing. We thought if we train the faculty, get them on board, at least 10 faculty from different areas of the college and different um, technology levels. We have some people come in that are almost anti-technology as part of the first 10 cohorts. And we had some that were using it actively. And so we wanted to get people, we, you know, diversity as far as male and female and different things. We didn't want it to be all the technology users as the first cohorts. Um, so we've done that. We took 10 people, we did like a 12-week course, give them an iPad, give them some iTunes cards, have them buy a bunch of apps, say what works, what doesn't work, have them come back, talk to it. So right now they're in the assessment stage, so they're actually using their iPads currently in the classroom. And then they have to do reflection for the rest of the semester and throughout the, throughout the summer. It's, this worked, this didn't work, I really like this, hated this, my students were able to do this, can't do that. And then we can use that cohort then to move forward. And then we've also got uh, an outside grant um, from the Washington Foundation in Montana. Gave us $20,000 for the next three years that we're going to use to buy technology um, and then train the faculty and eventually have it more organic, I guess, come from the ground up. Where it's not me telling the faculty that they need to use technology in their classroom. We're not being forced upon them. It's their colleagues saying, wow, I did this amazing thing. My students were engaged and the learning outcomes were this. And therefore, we, we need to move in, into that direction. So the second thing we had kind of had to look at and take a look at, and we talked about with scale, is looking at our wireless, our wireless and our infrastructure. So as part of our ongoing campus process, we're just trying to bolster our internet. We actually just added a second internet company to our campus, probably due to Netflix being who Netflix is. Our students need it, want it. They can't stand to live without it. So we've been bolstering that ongoing anyway. So adding more access points to classrooms, um, like I said, ad adding more bandwidth, um, but also kind of changing out classroom technology. So I know a lot of folks here work in that. Um, adding more projectors in classrooms, trying to push more towards uh, wireless capabilities in classrooms, trying to be more device independent so students can walk in and the technology just works for them. So in those parts just being ongoing and being mindful of that and then tying that into the faculty training. Some of our faculty are great about going in a classroom and knowing the full capability of technology in there, but when they got their iPads, being able to use them and, and learn about all the different ways they can connect in classrooms and, and use the technology that's in there. Yeah, so all of our projectors on campus are networked and have IP addresses. Once you can get to those, um, so we can let them some free software and you can mirror any Mac or PC, doesn't matter what OS you're running, right to a projector in any classroom. You enable the students to do that, it takes the onus off the faculty member. In fact, remember, can walk into a classroom and say, okay, you guys throw your stuff up there, I'll take a look at it, we'll see what's going on. And if you have multiple projections in a room, then you can go to multiple projectors and group people up and create a dynamic. But I guess you have to create the atmosphere that enables the faculty to do that. 
Um, and so that was our next, our next thing into it, was trying to come up with a, a flexibility and dynamic classroom. So I said, oh my gosh, $3 million, and if something changes and or whatever happens, then we're just out $3 million. The iPads are old, they go into landfills, and we, and we move on. And I thought, I can change every single one of our classrooms on campus for a million two. And so I went to all of our classrooms, put together a proposal based on square footage, what we want to do, and now that proposal's out there saying, let's just spend a million two, let's just change every single one of our learning spaces on campus, let's get that up to speed, and let's push that. Because that's tangible, that's something that yeah, you can walk around, and when kids come on your campus, you can say, look what we're doing, we're creating flexible learning environments that our faculty can do anything they want in. So that's a selling point then for, for new students, which we all want to attract students to our, to our campuses. And the fact that we're enabling faculty to do things differently, giving them the option to not only teach the traditional way, sure, you can line those chairs up just like you always do and teach from the front of the classroom, or you can do some dynamic group stuff or whatever. And the faculty member who comes in after you does a dynamic session and the next day you teach and your students are like, man, you know, Dr. So-and-so just did this amazing stuff. In the same room that you're in, that, that faculty is going to take notice and say, well, maybe I need to do something a little bit different. It gives me that flexibility. So that's what we're doing right now is trying to say, let's, let's take those funds to something more tangible that's going to be long lasting and let's enable our faculty with pedagogy and training and, and focus on the learning outcomes and not the technology don't want to focus just on the physical iPad. That's not going to change our students. This doesn't make you, if I give you one of these, it doesn't make you any more smarter or a better learner than anything else. And so why spend three million dollars when we can do something else to change the environment? So that's what we're focusing on now. Yeah, it really just flipped for us. You could tell it wasn't so much about the device, but really about, like we said, like our learning environments and our faculty. If they know how to do it well and we have classrooms to support them in doing it, then students already have the device. Why would we replace it, as we said earlier? They're going to bring whatever they bring. So we have to be flexible on our end. And this is, this is a slide, a great example of, this is actually one of the training sessions our faculty are at, um, learning about the devices they're using, learning about the technology in the classroom, and, uh, and also about collaborative spaces and how to do it all together. So it really just kind of flipped and switched for us, focusing on the other end of things rather than on the device itself. Yeah, this is actually a training session. These are all faculty members in there from, from all different disciplines across the, across the, uh, the college there. Um, so we said instead of a top down, instead of the president saying we just need to make this thing happen, <laughs> that it, it's really, it needs to be a bottom up initiative. You want to get people to buy in. You want to get your faculty especially to buy in. And you want to create that, that atmosphere on campus um, and think about different ways to do that. Um, so now we have a little review for you. And then we'll take some questions. So we're going to go back to Kahoot for one second. Now this is, you can use Kahoot in a couple different ways. Um, Kahoot just did a survey, which we did early on. This is actually uh, more of a quiz. And so you get points for being correct, and you also get points for being fast. Um, so this is more of a gamification at this point. So you want to be correct and fast. And obviously, I didn't tell you you needed to download anything special. You don't need to add in any app. You don't need to do anything crazy on your devices. Um, and we think that this is kind of this type of thing is what you need to engage kids in the classroom. Um, it's quick, it's easy, and device agnostic as to what you're going to do. Cool. Oh, you have 15. So, oh, 16. 16. So 17. Random. <laughs> Random blind dude. <laughs> I wonder who that is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So get everybody's good. So okay. right, here we go. Okay. And there's a quiz, so six questions. Gotta be quick. This is Gotta the question. Right. They're all four multiple choice this time. Our president got this idea from where? Yeah, this is a difficult question right here. Um, we should show you how this thing works, and then, and then we'll kind of move forward. Now, as we go forward, there might be more than one correct answer. I'm not telling you, every slide just might have more than one correct answer on it. 
So two people think, checked his mother. Nice. You guys are awesome. I guess somebody guessed MacGyver. That's you guys just, are awesome. That's okay. great. So. Okay, so it should, now we have a leaderboard. Who's AT? Who's AT? Ah, oh, no. So Jay you got to be, you gotta be correct, you got to be fast. See, this is just supporting analytics that says when they sit at the front, they, they learn more faster here because Fo J Lo's in up second place. So is that, is that what it is? Yeah, maybe that. Okay. Total estimated cost for care over four years for the iPads was what? What did I tell you it was? Three point one, correct. Sixteen. Oh, oh. bunch Most of people. people are paying attention there. All right. We have a change in the leaderboard. No. no. No change in the leader. Everybody board. coming up and coming here? <laughs> All right. All right, next one. For the fact of the action side, whose picture did we use? On that slide. Oh, it didn't change. <laughs> Steve's correct. Dwight. I guess we took Dwight as a correct answer. So, so saved. Oh, it didn't change it? Yeah, I thought you were supposed to correct that. Oh, that's Dan? totally on me. I, on I changed that to Michael, sorry. If you can predict Dan's. I'm messing with you guys. That's what I do is it. Ooh. Okay. Who's Boysley? Nice. Coming on strong. What's the name of our faculty training initiative? iClassroom. We thought about the iClassroom, but that would really be specific to iPads. Yeah, we didn't want to get sued or anything. So Don's coming on. Okay, Obviously. just a couple more here. What's the top selling technology in K-12 today? Anybody know this one? I don't know if I stated this or not. Chromebooks are actually the top selling technology in, in, in K-12. So. The, the, the idea is that, that, you know, oh, we need to do it because Johnny and Susie are at X school and they're using iPads. That was fine 18 months ago. And 18 months later, it's not. And in the next 18 months, I don't know what it's going to be. It could be something else besides Chromebooks. Um, Trapper Keeper might make a comeback. You never know. Trapper Keeper. So, <laughs> it's, it could. Okay. J-Lo, leading it. So, for the future, what have I decided to focus on? Let's see where you're at. Right? Everything but devices. Nice. Nice done. job, everybody. Yeah. Nice. All those correct done. answers. So. Yeah, all of those things are important. So, pedagogy, learning environments, and training. Those are the things that we've decided that. Where we need to go. Hit the oh, hit the next. Go up to the next. Oh, hit next for me. Okay. Oh yeah. Final scoreboard. All right. Awesome. Go net. Go end again. Or one more thing here. Okay. Go feedback and results. Okay. Now you actually get a, as as a user you get to rate this. So I think this is kind of fun um, for students in your class. Like hey, how are you feeling? <laughs> I love that. You get a happy face or or a, a sad face or whatever. Um, so something that you can do on the fly, uh, fairly easy, no problems. You remember the days of clickers? And we had to pass all those out and tie everything together. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> and then if you go, um, what's really cool is I can go from here, I can go to final results, and I can save these results and um, save them right to Google Drive or I can download them. And I'll show you here really quick what I get as a teacher. Has anybody used Kahoot? Um, so if I'm using this in a classroom environment, and obviously if, if you guys can do it, and the average age here is a little bit older than our traditional student, right? You guys had <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You have no problem. Um, I would think our, our 19 year olds could do that as well. So then I've got all this data that I, that I can use um, as long as I can associate the name with, with, with the student or whatever it needs, needs to do. Yeah. 
Um, and I can take this. And you get every student's name, uh, their answer, total scores, performance, so a lot of analytics. I can also figure out um, what, what question was, I can figure out what question I need to focus on. Um, oh, it looks like, you know, question six was a hard one. Maybe I need to spend more time on question six um, in, in the next class or whatever it is. Simple and easy, free. You can get the 300 people doing this. Um, I think you might be able to get more. They say it kind of maybe caps at around 300 um, for free. Okay. Um, and that's about it. So we're going to hear back from you guys about um, your experiences. That's kind of where we're at with, with, with the one on one iPad initiative. So questions, yes? Is it a subscription or free? All free. Yeah, it's free. Completely free. Yeah, what I just did was all free. Um, yeah, I've been using it. And gamification in classes is amazing, um, especially if you have prizes. And it, it's the points. You guys, when you guys answered, you saw how many points you had right there on your screen, it's a, and it's a few, which is kind of cool. Um, any other questions about I, what are you guys doing for iPad, one to one iPad? Anybody who's running one successfully and it's been an amazing experience? Anyone running one successfully? They require it. Uh, gotcha. But it just, it just now started uh, this last semester. And so I was one of the main comments about the rest of the divisions are just waiting to see what happens now. So. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you're, yeah, you're requiring your students. So the institution's really not saying anything. They're just requiring. So all the ed faculty in your department then bought into that. I correct. That's what they're telling us. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm curious if um, when, when crunching the numbers and how much the overall cost was going to be of the initiative, if I mean, you had mentioned like the possibility of um, are they going to use iBooks, and, and if they did, could that cost be offset via the bookstore where the students are buying these themselves and not providing by the hall? Correct, and, that, and that's actually what, what Lynn University did, and they said, well, we're going to reduce the cost of textbooks to you, so therefore it's a, it's a net, you know, bonus to you. The problem with that is you have to buy into the iBooks system and you get into iBooks author and all that is proprietary at that point. So if, if at any point you decided to move into a different ecosystem like a Chromebook, all those textbooks you just created are not an EPUB standard or anything else. Again for us the issue then becomes like getting all the faculty to also buy into that you know and there's, there's there was some pushback about um, the ones that just aren't ready for that, that kind of medium yet. They're still pushing textbooks. They're just used to that. So, and you know, some of them can help get on board, but some of them too, it's tough. So, because ours was a blanket initiative for the whole campus, all of those factors affected everybody, and including the entire faculty. So it was tough for us too to look at that. And, and you know how hard as well as I do to get faculty to change using textbooks. You're going to go from one to another. Yeah, or your yeah. chalk. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yes, in the back. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, so one of the big things, we had students on this, the My Classroom, it was kind of a committee of people kind of looking into it. The students who brought on, I mean, you know, their reaction, it wasn't yes or no, it was just indifference was really the big thing. They were kind of like, they just, they're like, eh. And I think really that what that told us was they just, it wasn't cool or exciting. They really just didn't care. They were like, all right, you know, I already have a device was kind of the thing. Um, okay, if you want me to do that, they're like, I'm fine with that. Um, and then the next question, of course, was, well, What's it going to cost me? You know, they're not they're not naive and ignorant. They they knew, and the students that we talked to about it, especially, you know, they said, well, if you roll intuition, we're going to know. If you want us to buy it, we're going to know. So they had there was a little bit of pushback against that. So it was kind of those two reactions that it was kind of told us like, yeah, maybe we should take a little, second look at this. Yeah, and I think you know maybe five years ago when the iPads came out, it was a cool thing, and you know this university is doing it, and wow, I'm going to go there because they're going to give me a free iPad. Oh, it's five years down the road. Ah. It's not a big deal anymore, I don't think. Yeah. So our iPad is five years old. I'm going to chat to one of you. Just briefly. But we do have an issue. But I, the concept of my classroom that you've got a cohort model, I think you're around the right lines because we've, we've extended that. We have a large cohort model that we've been doing for uh, years now. It's been quite successful with faculty cohorts. And we have a suite of programs that help support the faculty. It's kind of going first. And we do all of that with a small fleet of iPads uh, that we manage about 
So you just have those check goes out to every, every class. If I want to use it, I'm just going to go check out 30 iPads from my classroom. So you're using apps and programs that are device agnostic, basically, that these will work not just on an iPad, but in anything. Yeah, specific to the Apple platform or Android or Microsoft or across all of them. So we, we were able to start with a couple of things that were already available to us and then we were able to start with a solid base and to instruct from there and to bring faculty up to speed and then they're able to branch out with other platforms. So we might start with Apple platform, but then they may go to their department after having a cohort experience and say, can you purchase a set of Android devices for this specific part of our department to do X, Y, and Z. So now the onus goes onto the departments, we help them manage those devices, they use one-to-one -one, uh, or bring your device models. Um, but the cohort model is so successful, it's so strong, it's so effective. It just works. I mean, well. And even though we are device agnostic, we did to be transparent, aside from the URF. Okay. And the iPads were incredibly hard. Are you using Casper to be updated? We're, we just moved to Jamf. Moved to Jamf. Yeah, we just moved to Jamf as yeah, well. Yeah, we did too. So, yeah. yeah. So Great. Awesome. Good question. Um, yeah. Anybody, anybody, kind of doing something at a large school? Are you talking about your active learning spaces? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, but like flexibility, in a traditional like like biology 101. Yeah. I mean, because I can see that very easily being done at a small level right. school. Right. So we recently just redesigned um, one of our classrooms, which was an old. It was actually one of those remote access TV kind of classrooms. I think what we've had to do at, at Portland State is that's, this is where we get the campus schedules involved because a lot of our classrooms, most 140 classrooms are scheduled as general pool. That means in class, based on the seating cap and enrollment, gets in that room. It's not based on the professor or the course. But then we have rooms that have a share, which means a certain department has scheduled priority over that room. If they need that room, as them versus someone else, and they get the room, and they have those shares or on the few departmental rooms, that's where we've had success with things like this. Like we have. One of our larger classrooms, we worked with the engineering department to get a share on that room. So central scheduling would give them scheduling priority, and that room looks a lot like the one you showed in your presentation. And the only way we were able to do that is by letting that department who wants to teach in that manner 
get maximum utilization in that room so they can just sit there with all the students ignoring the tables and the small projectors and focusing on the big one in the front. But that, that's a strength. We've always had to make sure that we effectively work with essential scheduling if we're going to make it anything like that a success. And then focus on the department that really wants it because we're just too big, two chimney silos, and everyone on our campus loves to be doing their own thing. So it's like herding cats. And that's where we're effectively working with departments and then other people get in there and go, well, what are you doing? And how do we do that? Then we can start these little bubbles of interest. And that's that's the most we've been able to make it as successful as it is right now, which is not some big, huge success, but it is working effectively for the heart for the really long time. Cool. Raul, did you have something? Oh, You're good? OK. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's a good question, John, for, for, for larger spaces, how to engage kids. Um, and how to create that flexible learning environments. Um, I still think there's things you can do as a, as a faculty member, but it's just enabling them. And maybe they just don't know. I don't know. One well, of part, too, I think, is, is you're dealing with a different kind of student. Mm -hmm. the students choose a little more art school because they want that individual one-on-one -on -one attention. And the university student probably doesn't. Yeah. It's energy. So. Yeah. Well, great. I uh, sure appreciate you guys coming out today. If you have any questions, um, we'll be around. Or there's lots of great people doing some cool things here in the room. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>